Hey guys, welcome to Molly Green. This is one of my favorite stores in town and I'm going to bring you along what's called a poll. A lot of you guys ask questions on the episode where I styled a photo shoot, where did the clothes come from? And nine times out of 10, it's a place like this. A poll is where I come in and I borrow clothes as a stylist to present to my clients as options. So today I'm going to be pulling for a personal shopping client. So tomorrow they're going to come to my studio and I'm gonna have their own little boutique set up. So this is one of my favorite places to pull from because they have a variety of pieces for all different styles, all different shapes and all different people in general. So I'm gonna grab some stuff and we're gonna, you're gonna come along with me, it'll be fun. So here's my final selections. What happens after I make my choices is I bring everything up to the register and these guys have my credit card on file. So what happens is I will bring these to my client. She gets to purchase from me whatever she wants and then I bring back the rejects. The other reason why places have your card on file is in case you pull something for a music video or a photo shoot and it gets damaged. So that's on me if it gets damaged. So they have that on file, they can charge me for whatever, and that way I can walk away with all these gorgeous things without having to buy them myself. So I definitely ended up picking out a color palette for my gal. Um, she wanted a little more bohemian elements but also wanted some structure. So we have a lot of these beautiful fall colors, but floral for fall is really popular right now. So I have some of that. And I have some of these really cute dresses that are so easy to wear. And they're so great to be able to wear in spring, summer, and fall, winter, if you just put tights underneath them. Got some really great sweaters. This sweater, I swear, is the same one Liv Tyler wears in Empire Records, because the 90s are back. More dresses. Really cute tops. This is one of my favorite newer things that people are doing now. And it's wearing midi skirts in places of jeans. So you could wear this with a t-shirt, you could wear it with bodysuit, you could wear it with so many different things, but they're wearing it just like you would to throw on to go run an errand. And I think it's so cool. Some really great other pant options that aren't just jeans, because people are still not wanting to do jeans post COVID. So something like this is like wonderful. It's soft, it feels like pajama pants, but it's structured. These are super popular right now too, these high-waisted trousers, because you do them with a crop and they look so cute. I think she's really gonna like the stuff that I picked out for her. A lot of people don't wanna come into a store and they don't feel like they can and they can put things together in a way that would feel good and authentic to them. So that's why I'm here. back of my car looks a little crazy because I styled a boy band yesterday. The 90s are back and so are boy bands. But we're going to take all this stuff back to the studio and set it up for tomorrow. And you guys can see my new space. Because if you remember Crystal from last season, I moved in with her.
Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. On this week's episode, we're gonna be talking to my friend, Karen Dusenberry. She is one of my style crushes and she's also responsible for so many of the most iconic looks in rock history. Everything from the Black Crows to Cheap Trick Sgt. Pepper tour and she's even dressed a beetle. So we're gonna be talking to her about her life, about how she got started and of course music. Karen, thank you for coming here today. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Absolutely my pleasure. So <laughs> I've already kind of told the audience what all you do, but you, you make clothes for rock stars. How, how does one even get started doing that? Where, how, did, how did you all start doing this? I wanted to design clothes when I was very, very young. Taught myself how to sew, all that stuff went a different path into painting and graphic design and, and all of that stuff. Did, graduated from art school and went to work at a record store because- <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's my, my horizontal ladder of success. And uh, ended up getting moved here to be art director for uh, the Peaches record chain. I eventually got hired to assist stylists and other designers to paint on clothing. It evolved very organically in that, well, yeah, let's let's tailor this, let's let's shop and let's make it really look good on you. So it started from basically tailoring and taking something square and making it a woo, yeah. you know, and bringing it some swagger. It was easier for me to design from the ground up out of exactly what they wanted instead of doing a, a you know, a truffle hunt for mm -hmm. something that is never, you know, you're just not going to find. Right. So, um, yeah, it went, it went through a lot of different steps and, and it took a while, but at one point I just went, I just want to, I just want to design now. I don't want to shop. Figuring out what they're supposed to, how, how to make them look like they sound. Exactly. That's exactly. the big thing. Yeah. What is the first piece that you were hired to build from the ground up? The first might have actually been Ringo. I got hired by a stylist and she said, you know, we want to put some things together. And of course, I'm just like, um, but it was it was just a fortuitous meeting in that we met the same day with, with I met Richard Tyler the same day. Mm -hmm. And all of his pieces matched all my sketches and we'd never met. Oh. And Ringo was like, this, 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 and this. And, you know, so it was... It was pretty magical. My, I'm still, I have secondhand anxiety. Just like, oh yeah, my first one was Ringo. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I mean, there were probably- it, I feel sick it, for it, you. All si simultaneous. It was, you know, I got the, the Electric Boys, this amazing band from Sweden and the Choir Boys and the Black Crows, like all within maybe a month of each other. It was wow. just that thing where they were baby bands and, you know, we're looking for something that they could afford and and you created so many iconic looks for them and it's it's like just going through your website it's like oh there's that iconic piece and that iconic piece and that one and that one and it totally makes sense right place right time and you knew what you were talking about when it came to what they wanted it's funny because a lot of my the people that I really admire in fashion and all aspects of it are very similar I got into style because of the Beatles yeah. Uh, I loved them. I thought they were the most incredible thing. And I didn't realize like what my life was like before them. It's really obvious when other people who work with musicians are the same way and who aren't. Uh, and I, I just love that it's all encompassing for you as well, where it's like, it's everything. You have to really like the music and like who you're dressing and then know their references in order to get it too. So it's kind of like, you have to know this whole other language. And then you have to know how musicians move on stage so you can make sure that they can function in those pieces as well. Well, it is, it's an architectural approach in that you have to know how they move, what the lights are, what the temperature is, what the, you know, what the movement is, yep. what, the, what the wrong rotary is, you know, all of it. So it's a, it's a very three dimensional approach and also know how they move, you know, where, what propels them, where, you know, what, where, where their energy comes from, if it's, you know, their lower back or, you know, th those 
tiny little things mm -hmm. that um, you just you you get to know where their energy emanates from. So you have dressed Ringo, which still is just what thinking about it. Uh, the Black Crows and Aerosmith, but one of my favorite things that you've ever done is the Cheap Trick Sergeant Pepper tour, <gasps> or the residency rather. What was that like reimagining such an iconic outfit? Because I, I made my own Sergeant Pepper uniform in high school, and that's what I wore to my high school graduation. That was really hard to make. So how do you take something that's so iconic and so well-known and well-loved and then make it something different? What was the process? What did that look like? Well, first of all, it was a dream job. Of course. Um, I was just coming out of grieving for lo from losing my dog which put me in a, in a perfect position of having this thing that was yeah. came in so fast and I was manic anyway. So yeah. I, I had all the energy to do it and maybe I had two, three weeks to do the whole show. So how many costumes did you have to do in two weeks? Uh, two, uh, two full suits for everybody. Um, except maybe Bunny, Bunny, Bunny was, he, he had the one and he mm -hmm. really, he wasn't that involved with it, yeah. but it was also my first job designing for them, but I wanted it to be of the spirit of Sergeant Pepper of 1967. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely cheap tricks, you know, through a cheap trick filter Yeah, of them not being costumes, but, yeah. um, you know, just kind of affect the, the spirit of that time and color and art. People ask me a lot when it comes to style, do I believe in age appropriate? And I always say no, but I believe in situationally appropriate. Like yeah. Tom can wear an Edwardian jacket and satin pants, but your dad probably can't. Like I try to explain that to people. It's one of those things where everything that you've designed for people is situationally appropriate and it it stands the test of time because when I looked at your page I'm like that's you know that's that video and that's insane and that's Ringo during like a very specific time period and like but it all looks very now as well which is really really just cool and I'm just I'm oh. gonna stop gushing about it now oh. uh I just well, really seen the times I've blown up the lab so <laughs> you have to blow up the lab or it's not gonna work out yeah yeah. And I would, it, you know, I think you do have to keep pushing people to just go a little bit further and, yeah. you know, reel it in if you have to, but it's, it's fun to see what they rise to. It's yeah. like, whoa, you really can wear sequins. This is awesome. You know, you could trade closets with anybody in the world. Oh, and well, you could copy and paste it and it would go into your closet and fit you perfectly. Who would it be? It would probably be, I'd be in Biba, you know, I'd be in the store. I think Granny takes a trip. Mm -hmm. That's where I'd be. I completely 100% agree. Well, Karen, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, thank you. It's this such is, a pleasure. I'm just so grateful that you did this. Thank you so much. Well, likewise. And let's let's do this again. Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that I call the working wardrobe. It's kind of like a capsule closet, but I think that a lot of people hear the term capsule closet and they go, oh, it's 10 things, everything's made of hemp, it's all very boring. And in reality, I want you to think about your wardrobe like you would your refrigerator. A lot of people get so wrapped up in this idea that they have to have the most fashionable stuff on earth, they have to change out their closet every season, they have to buy something new for every single event that they have, and that's just not the case. When I started treating my closet like I treat my refrigerator, things shifted for me greatly. So I always say this to my virtual clients and to my in-person clients, why do you have a closet full of things and none of it fits you? And they go, oh, I'm holding on to it in case I lose weight or gain weight or in case something happens. Holding on to clothes that do not fit you is like having a refrigerator full of food and half of it's rotten. Yet you have options, but you don't really. And when I start explaining outfits to people in terms of recipes, that's when things start to sink in with them. 
Last season, I talked about keeping a note section on your phone of things that you know would be really good to have in your closet. Treat that like a grocery list. So when you go out to the mall, you say, oh, I really need a new black t-shirt. I'm gonna make sure that I buy a new black t-shirt. It's kind of like going through your pantry and your fridge and go, okay, what do I want to make this week for lunch? What do I wanna make for dinner? Okay, if I wanna make chili, I have onions, I have beans, I don't have any of the other stuff that goes with it. I need tomatoes. So if you're looking at your wardrobe going, I'd really like to have a fun outfit built around this skirt. I've got the skirt, but I've got nothing else. You can then go out to the mall looking for things in mind to match your skirt. What we end up doing when we go shopping without a recipe or an idea of what we're looking for is we end up buying the same thing over and over and over again or worse. If we don't like to go shopping at all, we look at an already overflowing wardrobe and go, I've got options, I'll be fine, no big deal. And then something rolls around. Someone says, hey, do you wanna to go to this concert? I have a backstage pass. Or do you wanna go see this movie or try this new restaurant? Or you have to go to a surprise wedding or some other event and you go, yeah, yeah, I've got stuff I can wear. And the day of the event rolls around and you go through your closet and nothing fits or you don't actually like anything. Then you end up going to the mall last minute, rushing and buying whatever fits and just kind of settling for it. And that's how you get a closet full of stuff that you don't actually like that you never wear. So here's what I like to do. Go through every single thing in your closet and throw it on your bed. If you throw it on your bed, you're going to have to get it done before you go to bed that night. Or maybe you want to sleep next to a closet or, you know, a closet full of clothes on your bed, no judgment. Go through every single thing. Ask yourself the following questions. Does this garment actually fit me? If the answer is no, it's rotten food. Throw it out, donate it, get rid of it, give it to somebody else that will appreciate it. Two, does this piece of clothing actually serve a purpose? I think we get so wrapped up in the does this spark joy thing that we end up throwing out a lot of things we actually need. I'll give you a hint. If I actually only kept things that sparked joy, I would never own a bra ever again. You gotta have them. Does it serve a purpose? Three, do I actually like this item of clothing? If the answer is, eh, then the answer is no. If it's not a heck yes, it's a heck no. If you don't actually like this, why are you holding on to it? Because someone gave it to you? It's taking up valuable real estate in your closet. Get rid of it. And the last category is close but no cigar. So maybe there is a dress that you bought as an emergency before a wedding and you hate the way that it fits you, but you love the color. Use that as a guideline to when you do go shopping, make a note section, make, you know, make it in your note section on your phone. Like I like a green dress, but I hate the way this fit me. So when you go out and you see green dresses, you'll know, let me try those on. Let me grab a couple of those and bring them in the dressing room with me. And then when you have everything that kind of fit all of those requirements, hang it up in your closet and take inventory. Okay, well, I need to have a white button up to get me by this, this outfit. I, those are the onions in this recipe. Or I need to make sure that I have a black t-shirt that's gonna go with all my fun pants and jackets because I'm not able to actually use those in a recipe because I don't have what is going to tie it all together. If you stop getting in your head as clothes or something that go on my body and they have to be perfect all the time, it's just, you gotta eat, you gotta get dressed, treat them the same. That's why I like to create outfit recipes instead of thinking, oh no, I'm gonna have to buy something new every time that I have an event. We're not doing that. We have to get dressed every single day. We gotta eat every day. Let's maximize it. Let's make it the easiest, most effortless thing that we do that day. And let's make sure that our fridge and our closet is well stocked. Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite subjects. We're gonna talk about denim. Today's episode, I'm so excited to share with you. We're gonna be talking to Charlie Starr, lead singer of Blackberry Smoke and Bonafide Rockstar. 
like dating, you need to really, really try on a lot of different pairs before you find your soulmate pair of jeans. Dressing room meltdowns. We're gonna talk about vintage clothing. What are some wardrobe staples everybody should own? Hey everybody, welcome back to The Peyton Project, season two. New location, new everything really. So greetings from the new space.